classification pharmacology drug classification first of all we have anticoagulants anticoagulants prevents the clot formation especially in the veins and anticoagulants increase the clotting time and also prevent the clot from increasing in size by inhibiting certain clotting factors next we have antiplatelets antiplatelets also prevents the clot formation especially in the arteries they also increase the clotting time by inhibiting platelet aggregation next we have thrombolytics thrombolytics helps in the removal of an existing clot lastly we have antifibrinolytics antifibrinolytics helps in the promotion of a clot formation so however in this lecture we will be only discussing the nursing considerations for the blood thinners client education prior to starting the anticoagulation therapy nursing to educate the client about the goals of a treatment instruct the client about the required follow-up blood work instruct the client to make some diet changes such as avoid the foods rich in vitamin k while taking anticoagulant drugs also instruct the client to avoid the activities hazards activities because they may trigger bleeding so uh, and also nursing to obtain the baseline vitals of the client obtain the baseline blood work also instruct the client that the client should monitor closely for any signs of uh, bleeding epistaxis watch for nose bleeding menstrual flow excessive menstrual flow can be a contra complication of uh, blood thinners skin color if the skin looks pale yellow it may be an indication of uh, bleeding so we should instruct the client about uh, this retroperitoneal hemorrhage if the patient experience lumbar pain or unilateral abdominal wall bulging or swelling it may indicate that the client is having a retroperitoneal hemorrhage emesis coffee ground emesis may indicate a upper gi bleed urine tea colored urine indicate the presence of blood in the urine stools and quick test blood in the stools may cause cherry colored stools and we should perform the quick test to identify occult blood so this test is done to identify the occult blood nextly we have low molecular weight heparin prescription to prescribe the low molecular weight uh, heparins physicians based these medications based on the weight so for prescribing the low molecular weight heparins physicians pay close attention to the weight not to the lab results not to the labs uses low molecular weight heparins are used to treat the clotting disorders and also to prevent dvt post operatively administration low molecule molecular weight heparins are given subcutaneously it may cause bleeding if given into the muscles so to maintain the client safety while administering the subcut injection hold the skin 
fold and insert one centimeter needle fully at 90 degree angle and keep holding the skin fold through the toward the injection but if the patient is super lean then we should use a larger needle and inject at 45 degree angle labs if we are giving heparin infusion continuously then we should be monitoring the lab values of a PTT. It should be monitored daily and every six hours if there is any dosage change. A normal value for a PTT is 25 to 40 seconds. Then we have warfarin therapy. So once we start the warfarin therapy, we should be monitoring PT and INR. In the beginning it is monitored daily and then weekly and then monthly once the therapeutic levels are obtained. So PT normal value is 12 to 15 seconds and then for INR therapeutic value is 2.0 to 3.5. Pregnancy and lactation. Heparin it does not cross placenta and it also does not cross breast milk. However, if we give it to the lactating mothers, it may cause bleeding from the nipples. So that is why it is not recommended to the lactating mothers. And warfarin, it crosses the placenta. It causes bleeding. It may cause bleeding in the mother and it may cause congenital abnormalities in the fetus. So this is not recommended during pregnancy or to the lactating mothers. Infusion to oral transition. So once the client gets stable, physician dis, um, decide to change from the IV heparin to a warfarin dose oral. So nursing to keep in mind that whenever we are switching client from IV heparin to oral warfarin, during switching heparin to warfarin, we should be giving both drugs simultaneously at least for two to three days because half-life for heparin is 90 minutes while half-life for the warfarin is four to uh, three to four days. Caution. Instruct the client to use caution with the herbal supplements such as ginger, garlic, arnica or any supplements because these increase the risk of bleeding when used with the anticoagulants. So we should be advising the client to avoid any anticoagulant um, herbal supplements when taking anticoagulants. Heparin induced thrombocytopenia. Heparin may cause thrombocytopenia which is called uh, heparin induced thrombocytopenia. So nursing to watch the client closely for any signs and symptoms of uh, bleeding. Then we have antidote. Antidote for warfarin is vitamin K and then antidote for heparin is protamine sulfate. sulfate. So that's all about anticoagulants for now. We will be discussing antiplatelets and thrombolytics and antifibrinolytics in the future lectures. So stay tuned. Thank you for listening.